Hi there, Robin here from Expert On. Today we're going to be talking about microphones. We're going to be talking about the wireless microphones that we now carry from Gemini, which is an incredible line of UHF microphones. They're going to get you great range, ease of use, and they're a product that's about as straightforward as you can get. Now, when they talk about range, they're talking about up to 165 feet. They call it dynamic range because Let's say in a cornfield, you'll get further range. If you're in a hall with a lot of other wireless equipment and a ton of other equipment, audio, video equipment, these can limit your range. But overall speaking, probably one of the best bangs for the buck, performance-wise, ease of use, and clarity. Now, a system like this comes in a variety of options. You can get it in a single version, so that's where you get just one. Handset with the uh, trend, with, sorry, with the receiver, or you can get a dual pack, which is going to give you two UHF microphones, one receiver. If you're not looking for handsets, maybe you're looking for headsets. Well, from the same series of products, they offer the headset with lavalier combo option, uh, and again. Everything's exactly the same except from handsets to headsets with the body pack. That's a single pack. And then you get the combo. Sorry, not the combo. You get the dual pack, which is two headsets, which are going to give you two body packs. And you can also unclip the actual units and use them as lavaliers if you're doing a sit down. UHF. Really a good way to go. Now, these are fixed channels. This particular one we're looking at here is the UHF. 02 m for handsets now this particular one is tagged with the frequencies note that you don't want to have two microphones or two packages on the same frequency that would be a bad thing they'd interfere with each other and you'd probably not get anything to work at all uh, as connectivity goes on the 01 and 02 series so that's a single mic or a double mic or a single headset or a double headset option you're going to have one a quarter inch output on the back of the receiver now that makes life easy. You've got gain controls on the front, so I can control both microphones individually from the front. So even though I only have one output, if one mic's gotta be louder or lower than the other, I can adjust that using the controls right in the front. Making it simple, especially if you're gonna use it on a powered speaker. Now, if you use it on a powered speaker on the back, all the jacks are usually lined up for a quarter inch for being uh, mic inputs or instrument inputs, that sort of thing. So we don't have to worry about that. We take our actual quarter inch jack, where any, on every speaker is a little different, but look for the mic input, look for the mic volume, and you're gonna click that on. You grab a microphone, flick the mic on after you've turned on the speaker, give it a sound check, adjust it to the way you want, and that's all you have to do. As range goes, like I said, 165 feet, we could have done this outside, I could have walked two blocks away, but I figured I'd make my life easy and do it at the table. So that's how easy this is. Now, when does it get tricky? It gets tricky when you want to use it on a mixing board. So I'll grab a mixing board right here. Now, on a mixing board, a new up-to-date mixing board might offer the quarter inch and XLR. So uh, the quarter inch is the round jack. That's our quarter inch jack. And then the three pin on top is what we call the XLR jack. Now, the important thing is, is knowing what cable came included in the box. It came with a quarter inch to quarter inch cable. Now, though this is fine for using on the back of the receivers and on the back of the speaker, it is not the cable I would want to connect onto my mixing board because on this particular mixing board the mic input which is designated on top it says the word mic you'll notice on your mixing board that's how it's written mic and then down here it says line line is for as easy as we can say uh, from a CD player to a laptop to our phone to anything other audio equipment uh, that uses a standard line input is going to be there microphones are much much more sensitive so they have to be on a high gain input and they have to get plugged in up here. Now, of course, this isn't gonna work because that is a three pin connection. Now, if you have one of the new ones that has a hole with three pins on it, that's a combo or a dual jack. That usually has a pad button or an auto setting and that'll work no problem. But in this case with that, we have to make sure we get the right cable. So the free cable, great for speakers, 
great for mixers that only have one input jack on it, the, the dual or the combo jack. But in this case, we didn't need to use an adapter like this, which has our three pin connection here and our quarter inch output here. So we can take this adapter and put it right there. And now the microphone will properly connect all the way up here to here and in the back. Now, that's one way of doing it. Now, that connector is one thing to find, not so difficult. So that was a three pin male XLR. And the input was a female quarter inch on top. If you're lucky enough, you can find this cable right here, which costs a little bit more than just the adapter, but this cable now has the quarter inch that we need here and the three pin XLR that we need here as a male. So now this will connect into here no problem and this end will connect into the back of here no problem. Unbalanced to a balanced connection or a quarter inch to a three pin XLR job done. That's going to work now for us. That's the only one that you have to pay attention to is to make sure you use the proper connections. I do get a lot of phone calls, a lot of questions, a lot of emails asking the same question from folks who buy them and it's a, it's, it's a legitimate question if you're not used to using it. I plug the cable that came included into my mixer and my volume is very low. That's because you plugged it in down below when you really need to get it plugged in on top where it says mic. So you want to check where you're plugging in. Make sure it says mic. Don't assume and then check clearly to make sure it's labeled properly for you so this way you see and then get the according cable you're going to be fine so again back to the microphones they're uhf trying to avoid vhf microphones we've kind of made it our policy here to not have vhf microphones anymore uh, we have the odd ones here or there because they're leftovers uh, or somebody really really wanted that particular model for a particular reason uh, they tend to run interference with a lot of other products so uhf Still within a licensed spectrum for a while. Uh, in Canada, still going to be in that spectrum for, uh, for the foreseen future, so we're fine there. Uh, things you'd like to see in a microphone, which is what you see here, is one, the bottom unscrews. There's a pressure gate here. And basically, that's a fancy word for something to hold down the batteries inside the actual unit. It runs on double A's, not nine volts. Microphones are indicated by color when you turn them on. The top, this portion here, so now this is all plastic body, which is kind of a normal setup here, right? This top one on this model here, it's in a slightly better design. It's what you're looking for in a wireless microphone when you can get it. It's called a capsulated head. Now what that really means is that I make noise down here. It's not gonna transfer all the way up to the actual pickup of the microphone on top. So we're not gonna hear that tappy noise. We're not gonna hear that kind of background noise just because of the way I'm handling the actual handheld. Uh, it's made out of metal instead of plastic. All the electronics is located in here. This acts as a shielding barrier. It just improves and helps the overall sound of the dynamic microphone. Now, Gemini's microphones have a standard cardio setting and basically what that means is that it's going to try and capture sound up from here primarily trying to minimize pickup from way down here so this way we don't catch the speakers as much and we minimize the amount of feedback so you do want to speak directly into it is always going to get you the best sound and best performance out of it um, if you're using it on a mixer bring up the gain then bring up the level and then bring up the main volume uh, that's going to get you the best performance sound wise out of it but remember they come in different configurations, so find the one that you like and the one that fits you. Uh, in this series, there's no multi-channel, so you have to make sure all the frequencies are separate. So these are great to be used in places like uh, churches, uh, small private halls that don't have 10 different rooms in them where everybody needs to be on a separate microphone. Uh, if you're a DJ, I'd recommend going a model up. Uh, if it's for home use, perfect. Uh, if it's for an office, again, perfect. If it's for outdoor use, uh, again, if as long as you're not getting paid where you could potentially end up on a site where there's lots of other microphones, you'd hate to be asking somebody else to change frequencies when you can do it just by getting a step up from this one. But outside of that, fun to use, easy to use, uh, 
accessories that you'd like to get with it sometimes. Sponge, the only thing a little thin on the interior sponge, which is going to dampen the overall wind noise, and that also includes us. Uh, these sponges are great. They're always affordable and easy to find when you can. And these are drop bumpers. So this way, instead of having your microphone roll around on the table, this guy just goes down and that's it. So there's no contact. It just hits the ground. The mic doesn't touch the ground ever because of the bumper design. It sits comfortably. These are little add-ons. These are always great to find. Uh, we always have them. But there you go. So uh, I can talk all day about these because I think, you know, the majority of folks out there are looking for this kind of microphone. Uh, if you're looking for something more professional or need to be used in a larger application where you are maybe a DJ and you do use it out in halls, uh, you're looking for 200 feet of range so you can get out the door with it or you can get down to the end of the park, we've got those models as well. Take a look for that. Those are the, the 61 and 6200 series from uh, Gemini and their UHF. But for 80% of the folks out there, I'm definitely going to say this is what you want. Now again, Available in headset options and available in handset options. Available as singles and available as doubles. So, Gemini, I really wanted to cover everything with that. Well, I hope this certainly helped when it came to the uh, Gemini UHF microphones. My name is Robin. You've been watching Expert Island. If this video helped you out, give us a thumbs up. If you got any questions or comments and you're on YouTube, subscribe. Sorry, leave them right at the bottom. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. Uh, that's how we know how we're doing. Thank you again. Bye now.